Ah, finger planes. Very tiny hand planes, easily used with one hand. A finger plane is a very valuable tool for luthiers, most commonly used for shaping guitar braces and other intricate carving tasks. Join me on my journey to create some cool finger planes. I don't really want to call this a masterclass, but we're going to learn this together through trial and error and experimentation and find out what worked and maybe what didn't work quite so well. We're going to make the irons from an old table saw blade. We're going to make a bunch of different planes, experiment with different angles. So stick around. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the workshop. I hope your day is going fantastic. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that I've been making at least what I feel is some pretty good progress on the acoustic guitar build that I'm currently working on. In fact, you may even notice that it's sitting right here behind me. And the reason it's behind me is because today's project, we're not working on that, but we are going to be working on a project that was inspired by this build. I recently completed the rim set and the next step is going to be to close the box which really means I'm going to attach the back as well as the top. But before I can do that, I know I have a little bit more material to carve off the braces on the top. Right now they're a little bit too stiff and I need to loosen them up a little bit. One common method is to use a really small finger plane to plane away some of that material. And while I have a couple of these, these aren't great quality and I thought it'd be kind of fun to try building my own finger planes. I've collected a bunch of offcuts and scraps of wood that I think we can use to make some different hand planes using contrasting pieces of wood. Before I can think about cutting these, I need to have the irons first. But what are we gonna make the irons from? That's right, I'm gonna try using this table saw blade to make some plane irons. I figure it's hard enough for a saw blade. I've seen lots of knives made out of table saw blades. Let's try making some plane irons. I'm gonna make these plane irons a half inch wide. So first, I'll lay out a couple of lines to help guide my cuts. I'll use an angle grinder with a cutoff disc to cut these down into just over half inch wide strips. With these irons cut down to their rough size, I'll then head over to the belt grinder and use that to square up the ends and get it exactly down to half inch wide. Now if I have my metallurgy correct, the fact that the sparks coming off the grinder are kind of star shaped tells me that this is in fact a high carbon steel. Feel free to correct me on that in the comments though. Once I get close to my half inch width, I'm going to stop, add some sharpie to the iron, and then I'll use my calipers to lightly mark a line where I need to remove the material up to. The key word here is very lightly. Before you yell at me for using my calipers that way, I know that's not the best way to use them, but it's going to be fine. Back to the belt grinder. To help keep the edges square, I'm clamping a block of wood at a 90 degree angle to the belt, and I'll use this as a guide as I finish grinding. <laughs> Once the edges are square, I'll clamp all of these pieces together so that I can finish sizing them all at the same time. This helps me keep them all at exactly the same width. So far so good. I'm really happy with the size here. Everything seems to have come out fairly square for sanding these mostly by hand. I've got them right at a half inch, if not a thousandth or two just under half an inch. That way, when we make the wooden bed later, I can make sure that's exactly half inch and I'll have just a tiny bit of wiggle room. Now I think we can move on and put an initial bevel on here. Now, just in case you're wondering, why did I make six of these little blades? Well, my goal for this video is to make three different finger planes, each with a different bed angle. I wanna experiment and see if a lower or a higher angle works better for different species of wood, just really kind of an experiment. 
The reason I made six is because I'm not 100% sure the material composition of this metal. I do believe that it is some sort of high carbon steel. The exact content, I have no idea, but I feel like I'm gonna need to heat treat these in order for them to keep and maintain a good edge. So the reason I made a few extras is in case, well, when it comes time to harden these, if I have anything go wrong, at least I've got a couple spares already made up. I'm not gonna worry about heat treating these just yet. I'm still trying to figure out that process, but now I'm just gonna put an initial bevel on these blades. To do that, I've just made some simple angled guides. This one in particular is 25 degrees, Later on, I've made one that is a 30 degree bevel, and these really will just hold the blade and allow me to sharpen it on the belt grinder. I'm gonna just do the 30 degree for now. As I said, it's just an initial bevel. We'll put the final bevel on it after they're heat treated. The main reason I'm beveling it now is just to remove the bulk of this material before the blade gets heat treated, and I have less chance of ruining the heat treat later. Well, I have my initial 25 degree bevel ground in there. I'm gonna stop there. And now I think we can begin working on the plain bodies. These are not sharp yet, so I'm not gonna slice myself up while we're working. Now the construction method that I'm gonna use is really quite simple. There's not really a whole lot that goes into it, but to help me better understand some of the geometry and get an idea for some sizes, I made up a few test subjects here. These little guys are just some quick mock-ups I did. They're just glued together with CA glue out of some scrap pieces of wood. If we take a look at this one, all we need for parts are two pieces for the sides and then a piece for the front and the back. The back piece is going to include the bed angle. That's where I'm gonna do a little bit of experimentation, changing the angle a little bit. This one I've just done a little bit more quick contouring with, just playing around with some ideas. I've gathered up some random scraps of different species of wood. Again, all we need are two flat pieces for the side and then a couple pieces that are the width of whatever the blade is you're going to use. In my case, it's going to be half inch. Let's see what we can come up with here. I'm going to take all of my scrap pieces to the bandsaw and use that to rough out all of the parts for these three planes. As I'm roughing them out, I'm not worried too much about the dimensions at this point. I'm just making sure that there's plenty of extra material that we can remove when it comes time to shape these. Here's the starting blocks for my three planes. Now the construction techniques are gonna be exactly the same for all three of these. The only thing I'm gonna end up changing is the bed angle, like I said, because I wanna experiment with different angles. But overall, I'm gonna make one exactly the same as I make the others. So in order to keep this a little bit shorter, we'll set those aside and I'll work on those off camera. You and I, we're gonna work on this one that's made out of Purdue and maple. The construction is really simple. One of these pieces we're gonna glue at our bed angle. The other is gonna become the front edge. I don't know what the technical term is for that. We're gonna glue those in place, glue on that. And basically that's our plane. But to get our angles correct, we need to do a little bit of quick layout on at least one of these pieces. For this plane, I'm gonna do a 45 degree bed angle. I've got one of these little digital protractor dealios. That is a technical term. And I'm just going to mark a 45 degree angle, or according to this, a 44.9 degree angle, close enough. So there's our 45 degree that will glue this piece on at. This is a little bit oversized. A lot of this extra material is going to get removed because we want this little guy to be kind of small. From our 45 degree angle, I'm going to go over, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch or so, and that's going to be the mouth of this plane. From that mark, I'm going to go about 60 degrees in the opposite direction. And that's gonna be where we're gonna glue our front piece on. And now the only other thing that we really need to mark out is where we need to drill the hole for the brass pin. Now we gotta remember there's gonna be a wedge in here. To make that a little easier, I 3D printed a little wedge shape that has a 10 degree taper. Now in playing around with the different sizes before I made this, I found that if you go any higher than 10, at least in my experience, it seems like it's really tough to get a good fit. So I think maybe eight to 10 degrees would be perfect for such a small plane like this. So there's a little representation of where the wedge is gonna go. 
Now down here, you may notice that there's a little bit of a traffic jam here of lines, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a slight bevel on the front edge of this piece that's gonna kind of give a little extra room for both the blade and the wedge. And also it's going to kind of keep the size of this mouth consistent as we have to flatten this over time. Now the end result of this plane I think is gonna be a little bit shorter, maybe somewhere around this area. So I think I'm gonna drill my hole right along this line, maybe right around there. So really the layout's pretty simple. You just need to choose your bed angle, then mark in the taper of your wedge, and then somewhere around a 60 degree is what I've found to work good for the front piece, and that's really all you need to do. The cool thing is, since these are so easy to make, you can play around with the bed angles, and that's exactly what I'm doing. The other planes I'm gonna put together, I'm gonna play with going a little bit steeper. I'm gonna try some that are a little bit shallower, more of a low angle style. This one, just a standard 45 degree. But for these, it's really easy just to make several of them and experiment with different angles. Now I'm gonna head over to the drill press and drill out this eighth inch hole for the brass pin. I like to do that now before we glue on any of these other blocks. We're not gonna drill both sides yet because later on, once we glue the two halves together, then we can use this kind of as a pilot hole to drill all the way through. Now before we glue this piece on our 45 degree line, I want to glue both of these at the same time. So we need to prepare this other piece. I want to make a notch here so that once we glue this on, it's going to be almost parallel with our 45 degree angle. If you look at a lot of wooden hand planes, you'll notice this same style of notch on there. There's probably some sort of scientific angle that really defines this, but for these little guys, I found that as long as it's close to your bed angle, whether it's 45 degrees or something else, then it works just fine. I'm gonna sand this notch in. It's super quick and you don't have to remove much material at all. The last thing I'm going to do before I glue these pieces in place is just make sure that the bed surface is perfectly flat. Time to glue these two blocks in place. I'm using my pencil line to keep everything in alignment. If it shifts a tiny bit, it's not going to be a big deal, but I want it to be close. Now I'll just clamp those two pieces in place for a little bit. Let that glue set up. Now I'm using wood glue here, but I don't think that's absolutely necessary. I don't see any reason you couldn't use CA glue. It dries super quick and you can really have the plane knocked out in a matter of a few minutes. In fact, the first couple mock-ups I made of these planes as I was figuring things out are made with CA glue. And really, especially this one, I see no reason why I couldn't just sand it a little bit more and this could be a completed piece. I don't think it's going to come apart. CA glue makes it super quick. Use whatever glue works for you though. Just to make sure both of these surfaces are parallel, I'm just gonna run them on this sanding beam real quick. I'm not trying to sand down really any material, just to make sure it's nice and flat and everything's even. Now we are ready to glue on our second side. Now sometimes this can be a little tricky to get everything lined up. I've even tried trimming off this excess first on some of the practice ones. And really, as long as you can get the bottom edges registered together somehow. If you've got a couple scraps of wood that are the same height, you can kind of use those as like a makeshift gauge block to hold everything in alignment while you get it clamped up. Now that our glue's dry, now is where the real fun begins. This is where you get to use your imagination a little bit. How do you want this thing to look? Because now we're gonna shape it and you get to make it however you want. Now currently, I've got a lot of extra material on here that I'm gonna carefully cut away at the bandsaw before we take this to the belt grinder and start shaping.
Once I have everything sort of roughed in, before I get too carried away with shaping, I want to go ahead and finish drilling this hole all the way through. Now it doesn't really matter when you drill this hole, as long as you do it while the sides are both parallel. As I'm shaping this little plane, I'm periodically checking it with a machinist square to make sure I'm keeping it as square as I can. I'm using the top edge of the belt to sand the contour along the top edge. Now if you don't have a belt grinder, don't worry, just build your own. That's exactly what I did. All kidding aside, you could do all of this shaping using a regular belt sander or even by hand using files and rasps. With the shaping complete, now I can install the 8th inch brass rod and cut off the excess using a hacksaw. To keep that pin from working itself out, I'm just going to use a ball peen hammer and carefully peen over the ends. Now all we're missing is a wedge to hold the iron in place. I'm going to use a piece of the same paduke that I used for these middle spacers, mainly because it's already the right width as I throw the plane around. But really, you could use any scrap of wood that's going to work, and you can even have some fun with it. Laminate some pieces together, make some colorful combinations. Use your imagination. Now the angle that I'm going to use for the wedge is somewhere around that 10 degree mark. Maybe a hair under, maybe a hair over but try to shoot for something around 10 degrees seems to work the best. Here I'm just sketching in a little rounded portion at the top of the wedge. This is helpful to get a hold of the wedge if you need to remove it and also gives you a surface you can tap with a hammer for making fine adjustments. As I'm test fitting the wedge overall, it fits really good so far, but the tip goes down almost to the end of the blade. So I need to shorten that up just a little bit. I'll just knock a tiny bit off the end of that on the belt sander. I'm also gonna sand a very small scallop or a bevel at the very end of the wedge. It seems like the shavings exit the plane better. This kind of works like a chip breaker, I guess. Now when I test fit the wedge, it looks great. I think this is going to work well. Hopefully you can see, I'm not sure if you can really tell or not, but that scalloped edge sits just above the edge of the blade and sort of works like a little mini chip breaker. In the first tests, I left that edge just kind of squared off and it seemed like it wanted to catch the chips. But once I put that little scalloped end on there, it seems to work much better. So far, I am really liking this little guy. There's just one step missing. You guessed it. Sanding. <laughs> it's kind of hard to hang on to while you're sanded. For a finish on this little plane, I'm just going to use regular paste wax. I'm not going to bother trying to do any sort of fancy finish. This wax works just fine. You just need to be very careful to try to keep the wax off of the bed and also off of the tapered portions of the wedge. With this little guy done, just look at it. It's so little and tiny. <laughs> this is going to be awesome to use, but remember, we got to do a little bit more work to this blade or I guess we should call it the iron. Now I don't claim to be an expert in metallurgy, but I do know that steel has to be hardened in order for it to retain an edge. While it is probably possible that we could sharpen this up and get it pretty sharp, the chances of it holding an edge very long is not very high. So that means we need to attempt something that frankly I've never done before, but that's okay. We're gonna change that today. Now I don't have a fancy forge to heat this up, so we're gonna try the map gas I think that because this is such a relatively small piece of iron that we should be able to get it hot enough that we can then quench it in some oil to harden this blade up. 
So our goal here is to heat this up until it's red hot. And when steel reaches a certain temperature, a magnet will no longer stick to it. That temperature is somewhere in the neighborhood of 1400 degrees, I believe. When the steel reaches the temperature where the magnet won't stick, I'm gonna dunk it in some oil, which in my case, I'm using vegetable oil that I've preheated to 130 degrees. You don't want the oil to be cold, so it's important that it's preheated. Well, that didn't seem all that bad. I've got a file here. Now, the way you can tell if it's hardened or not is if the file skates over the metal instead of biting in. A lot of times you can tell by the sound. So let's see. It's scraping some of this black gunk off. but it's not cutting the metal, so I call that a success. So now I've got to do that exact same process for the rest of these irons, and then I need to do what's called a tempering process, because right now, if we were to use this, this metal is going to be very brittle, and there's a chance that it could really just snap like a twig. So I'm going to put it in the oven at 400 degrees for one hour. I'm going to do that process twice, so I'm going to give it two tempering cycles in the oven, and then we'll come back and sharpen these up, and try out our new planes. Well, I can tell you that I'm glad today's a little bit of a cooler day because having the oven on for three plus hours while these were going through the heat cycles really warmed the place up. But I think these turned out awesome. Let's take a little closer look. Amidst the black crud that we have to clean off yet, you can see that the steel has turned a really nice kind of a straw color. A little bit hard to see, but it's there. And I think that's exactly what we want we can now put an edge on these. Don't worry, little guy. Your iron's coming soon. That's shaven sharp. Let's assemble this guy. So that wraps up our little tiny finger plane. This thing's ready to be put to work. Now you may be thinking, I thought you said you were going to make more. Where are those? There they are. I know I said I was going to make three, but I was having so much fun making these little things that I made a little tiny fourth. Let's take a little bit closer look and then see how they cut. So of course this is the one we just made. This one's Maple and Paduke. It has a 45 degree bed angle. Turned out awesome. I love the way that looks. This was kind of an experimental one. I tried a little bit different shape for some of the areas. This one has a 55 degree bed angle. This little guy made out of black walnut and maple has a 35 degree angle. Really like the way this one looks too. And this little tiny guy here made out of purple heart and maple. This has a 30 degree bed angle. All of these turned out great. These things are so fun to put together. I've got a scrap brace here. We'll just use this kind of to test these out. I'm going to start with the steepest angle and we'll work our way down to shallowest. So you can see we're getting the shaving. This one, I just can't really get it to cut very well. And when it does catch the wood, it seems like it catches so hard that it just pushes everything up out of there. So I don't recommend going steeper. Now, this one I probably will never use, but I can still use this blade. I might make some more of these later. Yeah, just can't quite get a good cut with that. So 55 degrees. Well, I don't recommend it. Let's go to the one with 45 degrees. Got a nice shaving. It does cut quite well. Seems like it wants to catch just a little bit. That may be because I have the blade set a little too heavy, but it does make a cut. Can get a shaving from it. 
35 degrees. So you can see we can get a pretty fine shaving there. Works pretty well. And let's go to this little tiny one here at 30 degrees. This one is like a dream. It cuts incredible. Look at that, nice and smooth. This one's awesome. I think this one's my favorite. This one too, but this one cuts a little bit better. So out of all three of these, this would be the one that I'm least impressed with. I think having the higher angle really is just not a good idea. This one is really hard to get to cut, and when it does, it cuts really rough. So I would not recommend making one that has over a 45 degree angle. Out of these three, the one that cuts the best is this little guy with the 30 degree angle. This one with the 35 degree angle cuts really nice as well. And this one cuts pretty good, but it's just not quite as smooth as these two with the lower bed angle. So it would probably be my recommendation, if you're gonna make some planes like this, try to stick with somewhere around that 30 degree angle. Maybe a little under, maybe a little over, but it just seems to cut better than even the one with a 45 degree angle. This one still cuts pretty good, but not quite like these others. One other issue that I did have, even on these planes that cut really well, was when I polished the blade, I polished up the entire surface of the blade, and really I think overall it made it too slick, and this little tiny wedge just couldn't hold on, so when I tried to make a cut, it would pop the blade and the wedge right out of the plane. So I ended up going back and roughing up the non-cutting surface of the blade with some 320 grit sandpaper as well as the surface of the wedge and that seemed to fix everything. I think there just wasn't enough friction there because everything was polished to a mirror finish. I don't know if that's due to the way I made these or just because it's so small there just wasn't enough clamping surface on the wedge to hold everything. So just keep that in mind if you're having trouble keeping your blade inside your little tiny planes. Overall I would call this little experiment a success. Except this guy, he's not too much of a success, but that's okay. That's how we learn things. We gotta experiment, try new stuff, have some fun while you're doing it, and we have some valuable takeaways that we can tuck away in the back of our mind for the next time around. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. This was super fun to do. Got to do a little bit of heat treating, making my own blades from an old saw blade, and now I have some very cool little finger planes that I can put to work on the acoustic guitar build. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. Hit that thumbs up button if you found this helpful. We'll see you guys next time.